Let's once again look at limits in single variable calculus. If I say that the limit as x approaches 2.5 of some function f of x is equal to 5, that means that this value, we're not actually evaluating the function at 2.5. It means we are getting closer and closer to 2.5 along the x-axis, and then for every point along the x-axis, we're evaluating the function and seeing what happens as it gets closer and closer to uh, this value that we desire, this 2.5 value. Now it looks like as we approach from the left it approaches this value of 5 and as we approach from the right it approaches the value of 5 and the limit theorem basically says that we can get as close as we like to the value of 2.5 and our y value will get as close as we like to 5 from both sides. The idea here is that we're only approaching from values to the left of it on the x-axis and from values to the right of 2.5 from on the x-axis. That's, that's what we're limited to. Now in multivariable calculus, when I say that the limit as x and y approaches say 0, 0 of some function of x and y, and this is equal to say negative 7.5, right? Well, Let's see, there's 0, there's 0. So this is this is 0, 0 in the xy plane. And presumably, this should map up to, this is the point, 0, 0, negative 7.5, right? Well, we now have to consider all possible paths as we approach the origin. We can come in along this line. We can come in maybe along some sort of curve. We can, you know, even if we want to, we can spiral in. I mean, we can do anything we like, but we're approaching the origin from various different paths. And as we do so, each of these is going to map up, you know, each of the points that we select is going to map up to a particular z value. And it doesn't really matter what they do out here, but as we get closer and closer and closer to this, um, origin, all of the z values should get closer and closer and closer to the desired limit. So we have to consider all possible paths that we approach uh, the desired uh, point in the xy plane to conclude that there is indeed a limit. So I want to show you a problem, actually a couple of problems, um, that involve some limits that might seem maybe straightforward but when we consider the paths, they're really not. So the first one is the limit as x and y approach 0, 0 of this function, uh, quantity x plus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Obviously, if we substitute 0, 0, you know, 0 in for x, 0 in for y, we get 0 over 0, so it doesn't evaluate at that point. But how do we figure out this limit? Let's look at it graphically, again, just to get uh, some intuition. So I'm using MVT. I just clicked the little... Uh, graphing button up here. And I'm just going to type this function as ex exactly as it appears. x plus y all squared over the quantity x squared plus y squared. And I'll click plot. And of course you see there's a hole in the graph. It's not a square hole. That's just how it renders in this particular program. But you can see, you know, it looks like a pretty smooth surface, but it's something's happening near the origin. Here's y equals 0, here's x equals 0, and it maps up to there. So let's use um, this program to kind of zoom in a bit. Uh, if I look at it from the zx plane and the zy plane, I see that the z values go from 0 to, I would say, maybe 3. So if we click Show Options, uh, Dependent Variable, let's go from 0 to 3, and I'll click Plot. Now we can see that the z values actually go from 0 to what appears to be 2. So I'm going to change that to 2. And I'll click Plot. Now it takes up our full screen. I'll click the Normal View. And there we can get a better uh, view of the graph. Um, we have the x and y's going from negative 10 to positive 10. So let's just make that negative 1 to positive 1 since we're trying to get as close as possible to the origin. Maybe uh, we can get a better idea of what's happening around there and not see that um, hole in the graph. So let's try that. We'll click plot. 
and it doesn't really seem to change. It looks like the behavior is the same. Um, we're getting some ridges and bumps, so what we can do is go to Appearance Options and make the mesh a little finer. Let's do 50, click Plot, we get the same thing. And just because we can, let's change the hue so that we can better see the, the height of this function. So it looks like the limit does not exist. Because as we approach from a particular path along the xy plane, it looks like we have a limit of 0. And as we approach from another path along the xy plane, it looks like all the z values tend toward 2. This is, in fact, the truth. And we can figure out exactly what these paths are by projecting things into the y-x plane. Okay, remember that the brighter colors represent the higher numbers. So here's the x plane, here's, I'm sorry, here's the x axis, here's the y axis. And note that this is uh, negative 1, 1, and this is positive 1, 1, and so this line is y equals x. So if we approach along the path y equals x, our z values tend toward the value, the, I'm sorry, yeah, the z values tend toward 2. If we approach, this is uh, negative 1, 1, and this is 1, negative 1. So if we approach from the line y equals negative x, the z values approach 0 as we get closer to the origin. And we can show this um, analytically uh, using techniques of calculus. So the first thing we'll do is we'll expand the numerator, rewrite the limit. So we've got limit xy goes to 0, 0 of x squared plus y squared plus 2 times xy over x squared plus y squared. This is, of course, limit xy goes to 0, 0 of, we can rewrite this as a fraction, 1 plus 2xy over x squared plus y squared. And now I say let x equal y. Okay, so that means this is really going to be the limit y, y goes to 0, 0, because I'm letting x equal y, of 1 plus 2, and then we're letting x equals y, so this is y squared in the numerator. This is now x squared plus y squared, and y squared plus y squared, so 2y squared. And so this is just 1 plus 1, which is 2, which is what we said. If we approach from the line y equals x, or x equals y, we get the value of 2. Now let's take this expression and let y equal negative x. Remember, that was the other one down there. If we let y equals negative x, our limit becomes x and then negative x, because we're letting y equals negative x, goes to 0, 0, of 1 plus 2x times negative x over x squared plus negative x squared, which is just x squared. So we get 2x squared. And this is just limit x negative x goes to 0, 0 of 1 plus, actually, I'm sorry, it's not plus. It's going to be minus 2x squared over 2x squared. So we're going to have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So along this path, y equals negative x, the limit is 0. Along this path, y equals x, the limit is 2. Because the limits do not agree, the limit does not exist. So for this problem, this limit does not exist. And it's similar to the case of Calc 1, where you say the limit from the left doesn't agree with the limit from the right. In this case, the limit along one particular path in the xy plane does not agree with the limit along another path in the xy plane, and therefore the, the overall limit does not exist. And you can see this visually by this dramatic uh, jump or tear in the graph. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I'll do a couple more examples. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.